Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got something really awesome lined up for you guys because um, the deadline for the entries for my replay contest celebrating us reaching 1000 subscribers is over and um, that's why I'll be showing you some games that have been sent in, uh, sent in and I'll be calling this series uh, Best of the Rest because these are games that did win but that still were quite awesome and um, that I want to show you. So I'll be showing you quite a few of these games before we get round to seeing the winners. Um, yeah, this here is Swag, Be uh, Swag Beast in his T-54, T-9 Russian medium tank. And the T-54 is an awesome, awesome tank. It's uh, generally agreed upon to be one of the best, if not the best, tank at tier 9. It's just really, really good. And uh, he just picked up his first kill on an ELC AMX. Fair enough, he didn't do all that much damage to him, but still he spotted him and it wasn't really a kill steal. So now he's having to duel it out with his IS-8 here who is being quite aggressive and you will notice that this is an assault battle and I've personally switched off assault mode because I find it quite unfair if you are the uh, team that has to capture the enemy base because you're just usually at a disadvantage because you, the defenders just camp and basically let the time run, run out or just kill all of you while you try to attack their defensive positions and choke points. So that's why I disenabled uh, assault mode. But apparently, Swag Beats seems to enjoy it. And uh, in this case here, he is Defender. So he's at a bit of a, an advantage. But I don't really want to take anything away from him because he still plays a really awesome game. But yeah, I don't want to spoil it for you before it has even begun. So, uh, yeah, the score's 1 to 0. The only kill uh, being the ELC AMX that he scored right at the beginning. And not all that much is happening now. He's kind of... Um, choked in here now he gets a shot into that is8 a bit unlucky because he was kind of aiming at the yak tiger and it was more or less a snapshot uh, he if he had been pre-aimed at that corner he maybe would have been able to take off the front drive wheel and the tracks of the is8 tracking him in place and being able to kill him in one go but nevertheless he gets a sh two shots in and uh, really hurts on IS-8. Now I think RT just landed a hit on the IS-8 and now the IS-8 is in really low health but for now uh, Swag Beats here is trying to get shots at the Yag Tiger but the bad gun depression which is one of the only drawbacks of his tank here uh, is kind of preventing him from doing so and the IS-8 is still being very aggressive. I really don't understand what that IS-8 was thinking of there because he was on so low health and he still was pushing around that corner very, very aggressively, uh, basically just asking to be shot at and killed. So he takes a shot at the Yak Tiger superstructure there, which would never go in, but, you know, there's nothing nothing beats a trier. So the next shot goes into the low glaciers of the Yak Tiger, doing some damage. And now there's a T20 as well. A T20 is not really a threat to the T54. But uh, if the T20 gets round the sides and rear of this tank, then it can be troublesome. And being in between a T20 and a Yak Tiger, the T20 could have a chance to flank round when he's focusing on the Yak Tiger. So it's quite important for him actually to take this guy out. He puts one shot in, an above average roll. And now what he does is, I think think the right thing I would have done the same thing too because he decides to be aggressive take out the T20 which is the easier target so that he can then focus all his uh, firepower on taking out the Yak Tiger which is absolutely the thing which I would do in the same situation as well so he takes out the T20 very confidently and now he can move on to taking out the Yak Tiger he auto aims at him and takes one shot in uh, I, in this situation, probably would not auto-aim, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference as he's in the rear anyway, and uh, any shot will basically go in, except for if there is some insane RNG going on. So he takes out the Yag Tiger who, <laughs> before he went down, fired off a random shot in frustration. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's his fourth kill, and now he's going to uh, start to put his gun to work on this... 
AMX AC46 to a 7 French TD, who's been caught out in the open, totally out of position. No idea what this guy's doing here. He's down on 4 HP and he gets the kill before the KV3 manages to ram the AC. So he's on 5 kills now and the score is 6 to 6, so that means Swag Beats here has done 5 from 6 kills that his team have scored till now. So that's really good. And what he's doing now, he's telling his team to uh, hold off the enemy while he's going to loop round, take out the RT and then um, yeah, attack the enemies from the rear, which is a really good thing to do in the T-54. And the T-54 is one of the best tanks for this kind of job because it's so versatile, it's so fast, uh, it's got a very high rate of fire and quite decent armor actually. I, I cannot wait to get my hands on this vehicle. I'm at the moment, I'm at tier 7 in the line uh, with the A44, but I really can't wait to get the T54. This seems like such an awesome tank. I've played it on the test servers and it's just really good. So he auto aims at that M40 and it's a real shame that the shot misses there. I really would not have auto aimed because if he hadn't auto aimed, then uh, he would have a been able to make that shot count. Um, but because he did auto aim and misses first shot, the KV3 gets the kill, otherwise he would be on the top gun now, and there's a Panzer SFL5, he rams him and puts another shot in, leaving him on 111 hit points, now he disengages auto aim and uh, goes for the low glacius, securing his top gun, he goes wide to avoid the shot of the GW Tiger successfully, uh, who basically fires above him. Now he goes round and the GW Tiger 2 is not manoeuvrable at all and he can easily outmanoeuvre him and pick up a 7th kill. So he could get a Radley Walters medal in this game. What he does here now is... he Now, I think what he does here is really good because he, he could be greedy in this situation because he knows that the GW Panther is somewhere at E0 or so. So he could be greedy and go in and just not care about his team or victory or defeat and just get the Radley Walters. But what he does here is he decides to put down some supporting fire and try to help out his teammates who at the base are actually in quite some trouble. So he tries to snipe the SC-152 but there's not much of a tank showing so he's going to go for the M103 now which is in a lot bigger target to hit. So he puts one shot in, rolling average, and you can see the really good rate of fire on this gun. Puts a second in. And basically, if he wasn't supporting his team here, it's not actually looking that good for their team at this point, because he's the only tier, set, uh, tier 9 vehicle left on their team. And uh, they've only got two tier 7s and him left. And the enemy team have got two tier 9s, the M103 and the E75 left. Fair enough, they're on low health, but still they are two very dangerous tanks. Now, although that VK 3002D might not be able to harm the tier 7s, he's still doing a very important job as a scout. And now he uh, he didn't lead, lead a shot enough there. If he had, he could have maybe taken out that E75. He fires a blind shot, but it doesn't connect. Or maybe it did, but ricocheted, we don't know. So now he's going to go in aggressively. And you may note that, uh, his, that there's only one minute in the battle left. In assault games, the time limit is five minutes less, so it's ten minutes. And now he's going to go for the GW Panther. He actually wanted to go for the SU. But he's going to focus on the GW Panther because he really wants to pick up his Radley Walters before this game ends. And he decides not to waste a shot but to go for the Ram. Which is alright. Um, sorry for that. That was just my antivirus thing. Um, yeah, so he's kind of trying to squeeze through this gap here. Well, that kind of cost him lot of time but what he's doing here is he's just basically trying to camp out and let the time limit expire and he's on eight kills he's got Stradley Walters medal he's just uh, this game is basically in the bag but he has to watch out because if they still kill him then the game's lost so it's all in his hands now and there's the SU-152 and he takes him out in the last two seconds of the game 
got a ninth kill and that was such a great game. I really enjoyed watching that one. <laughs> and it had some really funny moments in it. Like, for example, when he was, when that Yak Tiger there just <laughs> fired that random shot, all that. Um, he just took out that SU-152 in the last second of the game or so. So that was a really clutch game, really nice, and I really didn't think that he would make it. I mean, obviously I knew that he would make it, because I saw the post-game stats before I actually watched this game. But at, in, at some points in the game, it really wasn't looking very good for their team. For example, they were outnumbered and the enemy team had the higher tier advantage. But still, he played it very confidently, he stayed calm and, uh, yeah, just a great shout out to you, Swag Beats. Uh, not Swag Beats, Swag Beast, sorry. Uh, that was just an amazing game and let's quickly check out the post-game stats to see how amazing exactly it was. So, he managed to get 69,287 credits and 1,741 experience. More importantly though, this game got him his ace tanker badge, a Radley Walters medal obviously, high caliber, which means that he did over 20% of the total damage done to the enemy team by his team. He also got a top gun and interestingly a patrol duty, I didn't really see that one coming. If we look for team score, we can see that he came first by far, scoring 1,741 base experience, which is nearly three times as much as the second best on his team, this KV3 here. And yeah, this KV3 did quite a good job. I mean, he is a tier 7 tank in a tier 9 game, and he managed to deal out 2,334 uh, damage, which is quite a lot. And... Yeah, he really contributed, but the rest of his team didn't really perform that well. And basically, Swag Beast, he had to carry his team through this game. And he did it in a very, very good and professional way. He kept calm and he made the right decisions most of the time. On the enemy team, we can see that the M103 did quite well, but even he didn't come close to the experience score that Swag Beast here managed to score. Swag Beast fired 35 shots, of which 27 hit and only 24 penetrated. He managed to deal out nearly 6,000 damage. That's a lot. I mean, that's something I wouldn't be ashamed of in, say, one of my tier 10 tank destroyers. So, yeah, that's really, really nice. He received 10 hits, of which only 4 penned and 6 didn't. So, that just shows you the uh, trolling potential of the arm on the T-54. He received 3,000 potential damage. That's nearly twice his HP pool, so that's, that, that's very, very nice. He damaged 11 enemies, that's nearly the entire t enemy team, and picked up 9 kills. Now, I thought it was a bit of a shame that he didn't manage to, for example, pick the kill up on the M40-43, because if he had, that would have been a pools medal game. But the way it was, it was still very, very good. He got a Radley Walters, which is, yeah more than enough I think and yeah uh, I don't want to take anything away from Swag Beast here he played in an awesome game staying calm and just carrying his team through uh, this assault match he also picked up nearly 3,300 spotting damage and I think that really contributed to this very high experience score here because while 6,000 damage is a lot, it's not quite enough to get this experience score usually. So yeah, that was really important that he did the spotting damage and that also enabled him to get the patrol duty medal. I really, really did not expect him to get this much spotting damage. I mean, fair enough, he spotted quite a lot of enemies, but I didn't really see any of his teammates damaging them or something so yeah that's quite nice and also he traveled 3.15 clicks so yeah he basically just made a circle of the entire map nearly and yeah that was just a really awesome game i really enjoyed watching it and i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did if you did consider rating it down below or even subbing to my channel i would appreciate that a lot and i've got some more of these best of the rest videos coming up soon in the next few weekends and then Maybe in a month's time or so, I'll be announcing the winners of this replay contest because I want to kind of build up some suspense. Uh, so stay tuned because if you won, the first you'll hear about it will be on this channel. And also stay tuned for the other best of the rest videos because I've got some really, really awesome games coming up. Even better than this, I think, uh, if I may say so. Although this game already was really, really awesome. So yeah, thanks for watching as usual and I hope I see you out there on the battlefield or in one of my next videos. Oh uh, yeah, bye-bye.